Never seen anything like this. The second largest wildfire in the state's history continues to burn as crews work to protect mountain communities. In fact, it's about the size of one and a half New York cities. Meanwhile, electric transmission lines could be threatened by tomorrow, which could lead to rolling blackouts for parts of New Mexico and even Texas. NBC's George Lewis is live in Springerville, Arizona. And George, those firefighters, are they getting any control over this massive fire? Now, Richard, uh, they've got 0% containment uh, at this moment. We're on the outskirts of Springerville, one of two towns that was evacuated last night, uh, Springerville and Eager, Arizona. Uh, a total of about 11,000 Arizonans have been displaced from their homes by this fire, which now measures about 525 square miles at last count. Uh, if we can take a look at the NASA photos of the smoke plume from this fire, you'll, ex you'll see it extending northeastward from Arizona into New Mexico, it's also heading into the Colorado area, into the Oklahoma Panhandle, Nebraska. Air quality in all of those states has been seriously compromised by this fire. Some people with asthma warned uh, to take precautions and not go outdoors too much. Uh, the latest statistics from the uh, uh, Forest Service say that 3,000 people are on the fire lines. They're aided by 12 water-dropping helicopters, uh, two tanker planes, and starting today, one huge DC-10 tanker. Uh, one of the main concerns areas is the city of the town of Greer, it's sort of a mountain retreat for people from Phoenix. Uh, some structures in that uh, town have been damaged. Firefighters can't say how extensive the damage is because they had to evacuate last night. There is only one road in and out of Greer and they wanted to get those people out of harm's right. way. Some good news for firefighters today, the winds are dying down, gusts maximum about 25 miles an hour. Richard? George, we've got to go very quickly. When do they expect to have some control of this fire? Fire. Well, they're not, uh, they're not saying. It's, it's way too early. They're building dozer lines. They're trying to connect them all up, but they say they have no confidence that those lines will hold right now. Okay, George Lewis with the latest there in Springerville. Thank you. Monster tornadoes, historic floods, massive wildfires, and widespread drought. Springtime has delivered a wallop of weather-related destruction and misery across much of the nation this year, and it may all be related. Never mind the debate over global warming, its possible causes and effects. We've got global weirding. That's how climatologist Bill Patzer describes a wide range of deadly weather effects that have whipped the nation this year, killing hundreds and hundreds of people and doing billions of dollars in damage to homes, businesses, schools, and churches. Sometimes it gets wild and weird says Pat Zurt, a research scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. In more technical terms, weather forecasters searching for a unifying explanation point to the record La Nina climate pattern, a phenomenon born far out in the Pacific Ocean that shapes weather across the globe in combination with other atmospheric anomalies that have altered the jet stream flow of air across North America. Less famous than its warm water climate sibling, El Nino, this year's La Nina has been near record breaking, they say, in its intensity. La Nina is defined as cooler than normal sea surface temperatures in the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean, which affect weather patterns around the world. La Nina conditions occur every few years and can persist for as long as two years. A lot of what is going on is consistent with a La Nina, says Steve Bowen, a meteorologist who tracks weather disasters at AON Corporation, a global insurance broker. So far, as of today, the U.S. has seen eight separate billion dollar weather events. Bowen says, this is just one shy of the record nine separate billion dollar events set in 2008. So far, Bowen says the Mississippi Valley flooding is approximately a five billion dollar disaster, while the Joplin, Missouri tornado may end up being one of the costliest single tornadoes ever recorded. Based on measurements of air pressure differences, another way of measuring La Nina besides sea surface temperatures, this La Nina in February was the most intense on record. Accurate measurements go back 
1950. During the winter and early spring, La Nina is typically associated with a pattern of drier than average conditions across the southern United States. During the winter and spring, we have certainly seen that pattern of dry conditions observed across parts of Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and parts of the southeast. El Nino, La Nina's opposite, is a periodic warming of central Pacific Ocean water that usually brings powerful winter storms to California and a very wet winter to the southern United States. This spring's weather has brought extremes, sometimes in places where it's not expected. Flooding on the Mississippi River has reached levels not seen since at least 1927, although flooding is hardly unexpected there. Tornadoes whip the southeast, killing hundreds in Alabama, Mississippi, and other states, and blasted through the familiar tornado alley regions of the lower Midwest and Plains. Twisters also whipped Massachusetts, where they are not unheard of, but usually arrive in the heat of summer, if at all. And in this interconnected age, weather disruptions ripple broadly. U.S. Airlines' on-time performance deteriorated sharply in April as severe storms shut down major hubs, delaying nearly a quarter of all domestic flights. Only 75% of flights arrived on time, down from 85% a year ago, says the Air Travel Consumer Report from the Department of Transportation's Bureau of Transportation Statistics. Flight cancellations were way up too. More than 10,100 flights out of half a million scheduled were called off. That was more than twice the cancellations of April 2010. We attributed the downturn in on-time performance and the spike in cancellations to the weather pattern that spawned tornadoes in the south and midwest and thunderstorms in the northeast, says David White of Flight Stats, which monitors air traffic. In California, the weird weather followed a severe winter that left mountain snowpack, the source of much of the state's water, at record levels. A cool spring has delayed the snowmelt and could bring floods in the San Joaquin Valley. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is forecasting a busier than normal hurricane season. Because of extreme dryness, wildfires have scorched at least 3.5 million acres so far this year, according to the National Interagency Fire Center in Boise, Idaho. That is more than triple the average and represents the highest total acres burned in the past decade. Most of the fires have been in the southwest, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. According to the most recent U.S. drought monitor, drought conditions exist across much of the southern tier of the nation, from Arizona to Georgia. In hardest-hit states, the drought is almost inescapable. 94% of New Mexico and 96% of Texas are suffering from extreme drought. San Antonio recorded only 0.88 inches of rain this spring, March to May, the city's second driest such period since 1885. In Florida, West Palm Beach reported its driest water year to date, October 1, 2010 to May 30, 2011, since 1850, with a mere 10.39 inches of rain reported in a city that averages 33 point zero nine inches of rain during that period, according to the National Weather Service. La Nina years tend to bring more tornadoes than average. This year there have been at least five hundred and twenty five people killed, the most since accurate records began in nineteen fifty, and a preliminary total of one thousand four hundred and thirty eight tornadoes spotted so far. Normally at this point in the year an average of 823 tornadoes have formed across the USA. La Nina has helped trigger strong jet stream winds that have mixed warm, humid air at lower levels of the atmosphere with relatively cool air at upper levels. This helps create the supercell thunderstorms that spawn tornadoes. There is a very good argument to be made that the La Nina contributed to dry and wet conditions 
and these regions and associated impacts, the geographical extent of the extremes during this La Nina event, and how the expected wet and dry conditions have been extremely pronounced. Taken all together, it really has been an impressive winter spring for climate impacts across the United States. Weather on steroids. The La Nina conditions are one of the strongest we've seen in perhaps the last half century, but contributing factors in the atmosphere also play a role. Greatest among them, a weakening or oscillation in the normal vortex pattern of air that circles the North Pole, which has allowed more cold air than usual to flow outward, bringing cold polar air blasts starting in December and continuing now. In other words, the Arctic has jumped the fence, and that has contributed to the heavy snowpack in the California Sierras and Rocky Mountains, tough winters for much of the Midwest and Northeast, and the water that now courses through the Mississippi and other rivers at near record levels. The combination of cold northern air hitting warmer southern air, intensified by moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, was a recipe for tornadoes aggravated by stronger than usual jet stream flows where those air masses meet. All the ingredients were hiked on steroids. Fortunately, or hopefully, this La Nina climate pattern appears to be waning as Pacific Ocean temperatures return to average over the next few months, so they say. That's a good thing, too, as a strong La Nina also tends to boost the number and ferocity of Atlantic hurricanes. Unusual and severe weather always raises questions about whether global warming, the slow rise in world temperatures, whether natural or caused by humans, is to blame, or so they say. Nonetheless, climate change is already here. It's happening all around the world with unknown or unforeseen consequences, and it appears to be increasing in frequency or intensity. The weather changes are also another sign of the times, the end times, transition days, which is a continuing day-by-day -day process of extraordinary happenings, changes, and events. It's about what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations. Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, speak, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yes, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. 14. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. 15. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee the reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. 16. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. 17. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. 18. And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. 19. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. 20. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Yes, the harvest of the earth is ripe. It's time for all prophecy to be fulfilled. Everything is connected, and everything is numbered. Watch the weather changes.